r slash ass credit doctors nurses and emts of reddit what is your best how the fark are you not dead moment a woman stuck in her bathtub for three days standing water skin sloughing totally dehydrated she looked dead worst part in an effort to unclog the tub she had been pouring drano into the water she was sitting in she was also huge so getting her out of there was a farka and mess once we finally did she told the medic she was fine and didn't want to go to the hospital we had to convince her unreal guy with psych issues tried to kill himself by swallowing four razor blades don't know why they opted to not surgically retrieve them but guy sat up in our icu for about a week until he passed all of them i still can't believe they didn't shred his insides my schizophrenic aunt swallowed two razor blades and a few nails one day, no bleeding nowhere, until the next day she complained about having a stomach ache so my grandma brought her to the hospital, got a scan of the tummy, and it showed all the metals she had inside. Crazy stuff. I work in a neurotrauma ICU. I had a failed suicide attempt come in where a guy tried to shoot himself through the top of the mouth. For whatever reason, he failed and the round ended up blowing his entire face off. The bullet and his teeth fragmented and were peppered all over the inside of his brain. Upon arrival, he was following commands and kept motioning with his fingers in the shape of a gun against his head. His family asked him if he saying he wanted to shoot himself again to which he shook his head yes. From this, the family decided that they wanted to withdraw all life-preserving measures and just let him go. It took almost a week before his brain edema became severe enough for him to herniate and die. <laughs> Heroin addict and type 1 diabetic I saw a few times in the ER. She would come in nearly dead from diabetic ketoacidosis, since it seems she would only inject heroin and neglected to do that whole insulin injection thing. She'd get somewhat stabilized and sent up to the ICU, then as soon as it was physically possible she would leave against medical advice. Sometimes she would leave AMA because she couldn't stand having her shooter's abscesses drained, so when she would come in comatose a few days later the ER docs would drain it really quick while pumping her full of fluids and insulin. With her I learned that a venous blood pH of 6.8 was the lowest it could measure, as she just got less than 6.8. She also had a glucose of over 1400, which is the highest I've ever seen. I didn't see her for a number of months and had assumed she died, which is a sad assumption to make about someone in their mid-twenties. Then she came back in recently with the same, although less severe, problems as before. It's amazing what some bodies will endure before. My mother stabilized the neck of a drunk teenager that fell 40 feet out of a tree. He landed on a rock face up and split his skull in half, I met him years after this incident, and had to get a metal plate on his skull. My mother described holding his neck and said she had to hold back vomiting because of how the back of his head was moosh, her gloved hands basically were holding a pile of shattered brain, bone, and skin yet he was alive. She met him and said she was happy she could help but told me later she was sad he turned out a moron, still fully functioning but a barfly not a medical provider a friend was looking a bit pale she was getting out breath when walking had to take a break when walking less than one block we convinced her to see a doc she wanted to go to her pcp who could not get her until early next week she goes to her appointment and they draw blood her o2 sots are fine she goes home and the next morning drives into work her pcp office calls freaking out her hematocrit is super low she gets directed to the ER where she gets 4 units of blood. When she sees a GI doc, they ask her if the medical notes are accurate, she says yes. He replies with something along the lines of, and yet I see you here, alive. Irk, said it was the lowest he had ever seen outside of an ICU. The cause was thought to be a very very slow GI bleed. She is fine now. On the patient side of things, I go to the ER complaining about symptoms of dehydration, abdominal pains, constipation, and diarrhea they do normal tests take a urine sample first red flag as it's orange the nurse does a literal double take at the urine sample up until now the doctors have come in every half hour it's cool cuz I can hear that's it's a busy night then they take my blood pressure they come in and put me on an IV transfusing about 2 liters of water over the course of 45 minutes anyone who's been on an IV enough will tell you this is really far and fast especially for a 16 years old a nurse comes in about 7 minutes later, the intervals are getting much shorter very quickly, and tries to casually mention what my blood pressure is. Now I've always run a little low and my norm for 16 is about 10784. The nurse mentions that they think I may be staying overnight because they transfused about 2 liters of water and my blood pressure was still at about 8040, the normal blood pressure for an infant for those who don't know. 
Next all the doctors and nurses came in asking how I was doing, and nurses who hadn't been informed of my blood pressure went silent when we told them what it was the previous time someone checked. It wasn't the first time I had been in the how the fark are you this okay with your condition, but it's the most recent. Sorry for the long read. I'm an EMT in a really diverse area. We get toned out for a GSW, with no updates. My squad runs two ambulances on all GSWs, I was on the backup truck. We get on scene and see a large crowd of people all screaming and crying. The cops point us to this kid who is holding his hand in his face. He has no obvious injuries, until he look up at us. Blood just started to pull out of his head. This kid was shot in the face but was still able to talk to us. He was losing an unhealthy amount of blood, so we very quickly got him in the truck and called for a bird, helicopter. As we are loading him in the back he asked us why am I alive? Those words stick with me, no one had an answer for him. We quickly start bandaging the wound. It's a small hole right above his eye, we can't find an exit wound and suspect the bullet is still inside of his head. He is bleeding so much that any piece of gauze is immediately soaked. We get a trauma dressing on the wound and it's barely working. Medics arrive and start with their IVs and fluids. The helicopter finally arrived and we were able to ship him to a good hospital. We later find out that the kid was shooting a rap video of his friend on his phone when the gun went off. The bullet traveled through the phone, struck him above the eye and started to bounce around in his head. The bullet exited below the kid's eye. We didn't see that hole from the amount of blood. When we packed the trauma dressing it applied pressure to both wounds. The kid is expecting to make a full recover but will most likely never see out of that eye again. I think about that kid a lot, I hope he is doing better now. <laughs> Patient not person in the medical field but. One time I went in for stab wound. My own fault, don't run with knives. I drove myself to the hospital because I wasn't going to pay a couple hundred bucks to have someone do it for me. I get in there and the receptionist immediately started to freak out because I was as pale as an albino Irish gamer. They get me in the back and start asking me a bunch of questions on what happened. While they were hooking me up to shit I remembered something and said oh, you might want to hook me up to some oh blood. I'm anemic. All of their faces paled in unison as they immediately started getting that done. One of the RNs looked at me and just yelled in the loudest voice I have ever heard, probably because I was delirious with blood loss, how are you not dead or even unconscious from what you've lost in the last 5 minutes. Edit. I didn't lose a lot of blood it just looked like I did because I was trying to keep pressure on the wound with only my hand, because I didn't have time to grab a cloth, and my pants were already blood stained in the same area because I would use them when I butchered chickens. Also I looked really pale from blood loss because I am Irish and hence naturally really pale. The doctors freaked because a lot of misunderstandings led to the assumption that I had lost a lot of blood. Edit 2, this happened during last summer while both of my parents were at work. Both worked an hour away from me in the hospital. I drove my four-wheeler to said hospital because this is Alaska and people do that. Not any kind of medical worker but I was working with an family friend I'm a caller L, while well L and I were cutting down trees with the chainsaws to make room for a new barn that her husband was gonna have built, cause it would be easier to see the horses from the house cause bears have been roaming around. Well it was going well up until around noon and I told her we should take a break since it gets hot in the summer in Tennessee. 99 degrees plus weather with hella humidity, she says she is good so I just got and get a drink from the cooler up the pathway to the house and I hear a loud pop and crackle and then a grunt so I book it down the little pathway to see Elle laying on her back face bloody as hell her little glasses broke and the chainsaw on the ground, my heart sank I thought she was dead and then she started to get up and ask me to find her glasses I was in shock and I'm sure she was too so I called 911 and walked her up pathway and met up with the EMT at the porch of the house when he laid her down he asked me why I let her move and what happened so I explained to him what I heard and saw and that I was was just in shock so a couple days go by and I stop by her house to check on her and her husband informs me that she now has a steel plate in he head cause the chainsaw hit her head and shattered part of her skull and ripped up the skin pretty good so now she has a good size scar around where her hairline meets her forehead. Not a doctor, but a patient. When I was in 6th grade, I went home for some serious stomach pain. After about a 3 days of stomach pain, I woke up one morning feeling absolutely fine, and this lasted for about a day. Over the course of the next 4 days, the stomach pain gradually got worse and worse until it got to the point where I could no longer stand, and that's when my mom decided to take me to the ER. After waiting in the ER for a couple hours, I was taken back to the exam room, and within moments the doctor knew what was wrong and immediately rushed to an operating room. Turned out that I had a serious case of appendicitis, and the day that my stomach had stopped hurting was when it had burst. 
I remember the doctor saying he had never seen someone survive for 24 hours after an appendix had burst, but I didn't get to the hospital for 4 days. I'd love it if you liked and subscribed.